And hello again and welcome to today's Sugardale Charge Chat. I'm Scott Zarella. Glad you are with us. And it's a real pleasure to welcome to today's chat, J.P. Makura and Levi Randolph. Guys, great to see you. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing today? You can go first, Levi. Doing good. We're doing good. How are you doing today? Everything is great. I'm doing, ready to get going? I'm doing wonderful. Fantastic. Before we get into the questions, we want to welcome in all of our Charge Nation members, our corporate partners, and all of our Charge fans that are joining us wherever they may be. So if you guys are ready to go, let me put my eyeballs on, and we'll get into the questions. All right, here we go. This will be for both of you, but we'll take turns. How about uh, JP, we'll have you go first. What have you been doing to keep yourselves in the best basketball shape possible? Um, I went on a walk and a run today. So I live on two lakes. First lake is about three miles, so I ran that. And the other one's about two and a half, so I walked that. And that's literally all I did today. I ordered some weights <laughs> that are going to be coming here in the next few weeks. So I got to somehow pick up some weights and figure out how to do some strength and conditioning during this time right now. So that's what I'm doing. Eva, how about you? I've still been training. I've been working out this morning. Um, a few guys from that play professional that are from where I'm from, and you know we've been working out, trying to keep our distance though. But six feet, uh, six yeah, feet, six, six feet. We have a we have a trainer, um, somebody I trained with when I was growing up that we've been training with, and just a few guys though, keeping our distance, but still trying to stay in shape. Sounds good. All right, let's move on. The next question is from Mitch Reese. Mitch has been with us before. Mitch, welcome back. Um, for each of you, we'll start with uh, Levi this time. It says he's really glad to see you back in a charged uniform, Levi. You display a lot of poise and leadership on the court. You've played for some teams overseas. How would you compare the G League to playing overseas? Um, the G League, that's a great question. The G League is uh, it's a really good league. Um, I think the difference between the G League and overseas is that the G League is a higher pace. Um, guys are a lot more athletic and the lane is um, a lot more open. The spacing is different in the States than overseas. Overseas is, there's no, there's a three second violation. So you can't just, I mean, you can't, you can just sit in the lane overseas. In the G League, you, you can't sit in the lane. So things close up quickly overseas. And I think that's, that's probably the biggest difference right there. And JP, for you, Mitch asks, he's, well, actually, he says he loves your hustle and passion for the game. What has been your biggest adjustment playing in the G League as compared to playing in college? I mean, I think the speed. Uh, right when I got here, it was just really fast and super physical, so I was trying to adjust to that. It took me about a year, and I'm still honestly adjusting because it's, it's still a lot different because um, college is just slow pace. Um, run a play every single time you come down at least mine was so this is more just you got to catch it in the flow of things and just try to slow your down slow yourself down within the game um, but also play at a high pace all right guys uh, the next one isn't really a question more of a comment it comes from steve and marty briggs and you might know marty briggs she's the sign lady at all the charge games uh, they are a, a founders club charge member nation <laughs> since day one so I know Steve and Marty, and uh, thanks for joining us today. Here's what they have to say. They really appreciate your contributions to the team this year. You two hustled and made plays happen that were really exciting to watch. They were impressed with JP right out of the gate. And Levi, you epitomized what the G League is all about. Now we watched a completely new and better player that you have become, Levi. Congratulations for playing in such a successful season. We really enjoyed watching the games and the players this year who made the season so much fun for them as longtime fans. Can't wait to get you back on the floor again. Stay safe and blessings to you, Charge Up. Well, I'm going to follow that up with a question, guys, for each of you, along with what, uh, what Steve and Marty are saying there. It's because I'm lucky enough to spend time with you guys both at the Civic Center and on the road as well. It seems like you guys have such a good time together, always having fun, always laughing and smiling. Is How important was that camaraderie this year with the success that you guys had? JP, let's start with you. Well, I mean, anytime you have a really good relationship with a player or coach or the whole team, it's great for the team. Um, I've never really been on a team so far. Hopefully I'm not that, like, 
don't gel that well together. Um, and I think it's very important to have that chemistry right off the gate because that's what you need. Um, when you're battling adversity in a game or in the playoffs, which we didn't really get to do, but you need the chemistry because if you don't have it, it's going to be a lot tougher. So I think me and Levi over the year, because we've roomed together and we spent so much time together, right off the gate, we were really good friends and we gelled and we really played together pretty well on the floor. Levi, I want to kind of twist a little bit for you as well because what uh, JP had just said, it's kind of rare in the G League because I hate to use the word, but the league itself is selfish because not so much the players, but everyone has a different necessarily a priority. So for you guys to have that camaraderie that JP was talking about, that's probably pretty rare in the G League, isn't it? Yeah, it's rare. I mean, it, we were thankful that we had a group of guys that were just – their main goal was to win. You know, everybody wants to win. Everybody got along. So when everybody has the same goal, it makes it easy. At the end of the day, you know, they put uh, the team in front of themselves, and that's what kind of guys we have with us this year. And, I mean, it resulted in a lot of wins for us. And like JP said, it's kind of like a lot of us knew each other before – the season, it's, that's what it seemed like. It seemed like we knew each other for a long time. And from day one, it just – everybody came in together and was just ready to accomplish one goal, and that was to win. Well, Levi, you said a lot of wins. 29 this year. That was uh, – you guys were ready to roar past the franchise record. I don't know if you know what it was, but it was 31. You guys had won 8 of 10 when things stopped, and you'd won 10 straight at home. So, to both yeah, we, your points, you we guys had to the show. We weren't going to lose any more games. If you yeah. Were. We, we would have got the record. He, yeah. We are going to have the record. Easy. You would have yeah. easy, without question. All right, JP, next for you. This is from Tracy and Savannah. They're going on their second season as uh, ticket holders. Thank you for that. And uh, Tracy says they just love it. And her daughter, Savannah, is the biggest JP McCura fan. Her question is, if you went to the NBA, which team would you want to play for and why? Uh... That's a tough question. I probably want to play for the Timberwolves, even though it's very cold here in the winter, but I'm really close to home. And I'd, my family would be able to come to the games. My grandpa, he's about to be 90. Um, so he's going to be he's, – he's getting older. So it's like I want him to be able to come to my games. So that would be pretty cool. That's a good answer. Good answer. All right. Uh, question for both of you guys. This is from Colleen in North Carolina. Uh, Colleen asks, since you both played on Team USA this year during the FIBA America qualifiers, could you both please share some thoughts on what it was like to play for your country? Levi, how about we start with you? It was very exciting to be able to play for our country. Um, growing up, you always see Team USA and the guys from the NBA competing uh, against, you know, European competition. So for us to be able to have the opportunity was big time. I remember when we got the call, it was – it's almost unbelievable because, I mean, it's like you said, something you dream of. And it was great excitement. We took great pride in playing for Team USA. AP, how about you? Yeah, I'm right with them. I mean, it was really fun. It was a great experience. And like you said, growing up, you always want to put a USA jersey on or dreamt about it. So actually being able to, being able to put one on is, is, was incredible. Even though um, we went to Puerto Rico and it was just like – unbelievable like the crowd and, and the atmosphere was really fun so just to see that was was awesome yeah jp you you jumped on what i was about to say as a follow-up because every kid growing up wants to put on an nba uniform probably don't think so much about the usa but to put on the stars and stripes the red white and blue that's really got to be a little bit different feeling than putting on a professional jersey right yeah because you're not you're representing everybody you're not representing yourself or your team um, it's literally the whole country, so it's pretty cool. All right, question here for Levi. It comes from uh, Nick in Akron. Nick asks, uh, Levi, you improved dramatically from year one to year two in Canton. And actually, I remember you playing for Maine, and you were twice a player at least uh, than you were with the Red Claws. Um, Culminating in the, uh, the NBA call-up, talk about the progress you made and if being in Canton played any part in that. Yeah, it's a big testament to my coaches and, and the staff from uh, the Cavs and from the Canton Charge, you know, even my teammates. I think it was a collective um, effort between all of us, and that's the main goal there is to get better. Um, you know, Coach Rankin, his focus is to make sure everybody tries to accomplish their goals, and that's, that's what we work on every day is just try to get one step better. 
And I think that's a, a big testament to the things we do and, and the work ethic that we put in. And so I, I, I give a lot of credit to, you know, the Charge family, for sure. JP, I want to bring you in on that as well, because as Levi said, coaching and all your individual work certainly plays a part in becoming a better player. But talk about how also having the right teammates, as you guys talked about earlier, that, you know, you have good camaraderie, you like one another. When you have good teammates, you become better players as well yourself, don't you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think it's important to, like, push each other in practice, and that's what we did throughout the whole year. I mean, we had a lot of practices where we did lifting and skill development, and that wasn't necessarily competitive, but we made it competitive by doing shooting drills and stuff like that. Um, and it's just like every day there's something competitive about the team, and everybody likes to compete. And I think that's important, and we did that throughout the whole year. All right, up next question for JP. It comes from Aaron in North Canton. Aaron asks, uh, JP, you have such an aggressive, hounding style of play when you're on the court. Where does that come from, and are you like that off the court too? First off, I'm not really like that off the court at all. Like, I'm just <laughs> laid back, goofy, like to have fun. But I think it comes from – when I was younger, um, I have a brother, he's 18 months older than me. So growing up, it was just, it was, if I'm 10, he's 12. So it's like him and his friends were 10 times better than me, stronger, faster. So it's like, I had to just kind of get it how I could. And this, that, that's, that created a super competitive nature. And that's kind of where I think I got it from. And Levi, doesn't that kind of rub off onto other players when you see a guy really hitting the glass hard and, and going at it or hitting the floor like JP does so much or, you know, guys making the extra pass? That kind of plays into success as well because when you see one of your teammates doing it, isn't there kind of a backwards kind of guilt trip that I, I've got to play hard and do that kind of stuff too? Yeah, it's contagious. Um, that, that, that spark, that energy, um, whenever JP steps on the court and he starts to bring it, it makes everybody else want to bring it too. So, I mean, it's a big part of a team when you can have a player, uh, a guy that you can depend on every night to, to bring that energy and effort, it spreads out through the rest of the team. JP, you were among the league leaders in steals through the better part of the season. How do, you know, we know how guys can shoot better and you can pass better and all that. But coming up with steals, that isn't something that you can actually fundamentally put down on a piece of paper. It takes anticipation, aggressiveness, et cetera. How, do, how have you become such a good defender like that, both on the ball and off? I mean, it's just kind of how I've been. You know, I had, I've had, I've been able to read passing lanes and stuff like that, but sometimes, I'm not going to lie, it hurts me because I, I gamble a little bit too much <laughs> on defense. But for the most part, later in the year, I thought I did a better job because um, personally, if I had four steals and I gambled 20 times, that doesn't, that doesn't look very good. So I was trying to cut down on gambling, but – for the most part of the year, I thought I did a good job of gambling when I need to. Um, I'm trying to work on that, just be a little bit smarter. But it's just about reading passing lanes and just competing, honestly. But at the same time, I'm guessing that you can't pull the reins back too much because if you do, then you're not effective at what you do. You kind of have to play your game. But what are you saying? Maybe just be a little bit smarter when you're doing it? Yeah, for sure. Just, just a little smarter because I don't want to take – take back any of the competitiveness or playing hard because I wouldn't be the player I am if I do that. All right, next question is, uh, it'll be for both of you. This is from Greg and Canton. Um, Levi, I will start with you. What were your favorite moments from this past season? How far in the playoffs could this team have gone? It seemed like the team was really close and all pulling for each other. Talk about the atmosphere you guys had and how you've been keeping sane while being quarantined at home. So I think the favorite moments for me was just being able to play at home in front of the, the, our Charge fans. I, that's the best feeling is to be able to walk out on your home court and to be able to get a win at home. So, I mean, I had a lot of, you know, team moments that I felt like I, I can't just pick one. It's just every game at home was, was a great, um, great experience and a great feeling. Um, what was the rest of the questions? <laughs> like Part of it is how far do you think you could have gone in the playoffs? Because the funny thing is, again – it's real easy to say, oh, we would have been great. We would, have, we would have won it all. But being completely objective about it, you guys were playing so well, as I said off the top. And your style of play, you had depth, you had versatility, you had bigs, you had guards. You really did have a very good team. 
you really did have a legitimate chance this season, didn't you? Yeah, it's like you said. Um, I think as you said we won the last eight out of ten, right? Eight of ten, yeah. So we were on a good roll. Um, we have so many weapons and so many different resources with our team that I feel like, you know, whenever we sub or somebody goes down or whatever it may be, we, we don't miss a beat. So there's no telling how far we could have gone. Uh, I felt like we had the potential to win the whole thing. Unfortunately, you know, we may not, we may not know. But looking back on it, I think we, we possibly could have won the championship this year. And at the time, you were the number two seed, which would have meant you would have got a first round bye. So that certainly would have played to your advantage as well. The last part of the question, Levi, was um, how have you been keeping sane while being quarantined? Yeah, for me, um, I've just been trying to keep a routine every day. Um, try not to just sleep in, try not to lay around. Just if I can get up, work out in the morning, get lunch, you know, maybe have a, a few shows that I can watch on Netflix. I've been taking a class. The G League is off, G League and NBA, they're offering um, guys an opportunity to get a certification in a few different classes um, through NYU. So I set out um, – I allowed myself a few hours a day to go through that and try to get that, that certification. Um, so for me, it's just try to keep a routine every day and, and try to, you know, check off the list each day. And that's what keeps me sane. All right, JP, before we bring you in, I want to go back to Levi for one uh, the beginning of the question, which was favorite moments this season. You know, Levi, you're, you're being too modest. That 47 point game at Westchester was something special. I Talk thought, about that game. I want you to tell me about it. I thought it was, was that 40, JP? I thought it was 48. It may have been 48. Uh, it was 47. Uh, well, either way, it's an incredible you. amount of points. You did not make a three-pointer in that game, which is incredible. I think you had eight rebounds as well. But that was the most important. It was a double overtime win. And I just want you to talk me through it because, you know, guys that like myself that have never played at any kind of a, a special level, to see that kind of an effort that you put out. You don't have those games every day. How much fun was that game for you? It was a lot of fun. I kind of knew um, early I had it going, but I just didn't know how how hot I had gotten. Um, but my teammates um, were in my ear the whole game, you know, especially going to the third and fourth quarter just to tell me to keep going. Um, the second half was kind of a blur. I mean, I, it's just like, it really seemed like everything was going in. I, I didn't really take many three, or I think I took one three that game, but the rest was, you know, mid-range jumpers and getting to the basket. But it kind of turned into the situation where I just wanted to win. I really didn't care at the time how many points I had or what was going on. It, it just, that competitive nature kicked in. And once my teammates were like, Levi, just keep going, it's just the points started adding up. But I was, at the time, I wasn't really thinking about points. I really just wanted to win the game because in my head it was like, okay, if I have 47 points or 50 points, whatever it may be, and a loss, to me, I, I wouldn't be able to sleep with that. I would have much rather, like, what happened? We won the game. That was the main thing to me is let's get yeah. this win. So Just had 40 points in a win instead. That would have been better. But, but. No, you go ahead. Even with my 47 points, the big shot, it, JP had, I think, two big shots during that game. That. Yeah to me were the play, plays of the game where he got the offensive rebound and uh, laid it up off the free throw, free throw line. And he hit a big three at the top of the key that, you know, that helped us get the win. So I think those were, without those two shots, we wouldn't have won the game. Well, that's what I was going to say, because not only did you get the win, but you yourself had some big baskets down the stretch, as did JP. JP, before we get into the questions, once again, I want you to give me your thoughts on that ball game and watching Levi, because I know you've had the hot hand in, in games before as well, but for seeing your teammate Levi kind of doing what he was doing, how much fun was that for you? I mean, it was really fun. It was honestly incredible because, one, you don't see too many people score that many points in, in any league, let alone go 18 for 24, whatever it was. That's, that's in, insane, in my opinion. Um, but it was just a, it was a really good performance, and – I was happy for the team because it was a long game and I honestly felt like five hours. It might've been, but <laughs> we finally finished out the game and won. So that was, that was amazing because it was just, we've been fighting fighting forever and to lose that would have been heartbreaking. So I'm glad we could come out on top. All right, JP, let's get into those questions for you. We'll start with uh, what was your favorite moment from the past season? 
Uh, I have a few. Um, first one, I don't remember exactly what game, but my grandpa came for a weekend to Canton and he was able to see two games. So that was probably my favorite moment of the year. And then going out to Vegas was fun. Um, we went one and one, but it was a cool experience to play in front of all those NBA people, executives and stuff like that. So that was fun for a team aspect. And then honestly, the Levi's game was really fun and pretty memorable as well because he scored so many points and it was a five hour game, honestly, like, and, and we won and double or triple overtime, whatever it was. But back off to what he said, the, the home games are fun as well because you know that all of those charge fans are going to be there and they're going to support us throughout the whole entire game. Um, so I thought they did an amazing job throughout the whole entire year. Um, and just, it was a really fun year. JP, as I talked with Levi earlier, you guys legitimately had a shot to win that championship this year. How good did you feel um, the team was playing down the stretch and how much were you looking forward to finishing up the regular season and getting into the playoffs and getting moving forward there? I was really excited, honestly, because like you said, we had some momentum and that's huge in my opinion because you're going to play one game, three game series and, and it's like the better team's going to win. And I think we need to stay healthy. And I thought for the most part this year, everybody stayed healthy. And that's just important throughout the playoff stretch of staying healthy and staying together throughout the whole thing, ups and downs. And I thought we would have had a good chance of winning the whole thing. And finally, uh, what have you been doing to help keep yourself sane during the quarantine? I mean, I've been just going on walks, honestly. I've been waking up, going outside. I've been actually cooking all my meals. I usually, when I was in Canada, I would eat out or, I mean, I just like, get stuff delivered to the apartment and stuff. So, I mean, going on walks, cooking, playing video games, hanging out. Um, that's mostly it. I'm waiting for my weights to get here so I can start lifting. Um, but that's it. All right. So you, you're breaking it out here for us. You're, you like to cook. Give us your specialty. When the lady, when your lady comes over, when you go to visit your lady, what are you cooking her? Gluten-free pasta. That's, that's my go-to because it's easy and it tastes great. You gotta have something to go with it more than that. Just meat, pasta, sauce, some bread, with some butter, salad, <laughs> some greens. Woo. That's better. Levi, you're chuckling down there. Are you much of a cook? What have you been doing? What have you been doing for meals through the quarantine? They don't his call me cooks. Chef Barley for no reason. His dad, his dad cooks. My dad is big dog. He does all the big the, the big cooking. But yeah, I can cook a little bit. Um, pretty much whatever, honestly. I cook a lot during the season. Um, I've been home for a while now, so my dad's been doing all the cooking. But I usually I, I can cook a little bit. He's a he's a big frozen pizza guy. Just set the oven. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. All right, guys. Before I let you go, we have come to the um, part of the program. It's backed by popular demand, and it is called Five Fast Ones. I have five questions for each of you. It could be about anything. You got to be smart to answer these? No. no, no. Right. I'm the one that came up with these questions. Again, You, like I said, I can't come up with anything smart because I'm not smart enough to do it. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you five questions. You can give me a one or a two-word answer, or you can expound on it if you need to. Okay? Nothing difficult. This is all for fun. Who wants to be the first victim? JP. All right. Five fast ones with J.P. McCure. Are you ready to go? Yeah. Question number one. Is pineapple an appropriate topping for pizza? No. All right. J.P., why do you wear number 55? Because 33 was retired in college, and I like double numbers. I like that answer. All right. Question number three. Would you prefer to spend the day at a water park or at an amusement park? Water park. Question number four. If the Cleveland Indians called you and needed you to play tomorrow. Oh, oh, yeah. What position would you want to play? Shortstop. You say that like you've played it before. I did. I was nice. <laughs> All right. And question number five. At a picnic, what are you going to eat first? Hot dog or a hamburger? Hamburger. And that is five fast food with J.P. Makura. Levi Randolph, five fresh ones for you. Are you ready? 
Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Question number one, do you make your bed in the morning? Yes, I do. Right. Number two, you can take a trip to either one of these. You want to spend time at a museum or at a Broadway show? Museum. Are you a dog person or a cat person? Dog person. Question number four. If the Cleveland Browns called you and needed you to play Sunday, what position would you want to play? Quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing about? No, no, nice, I'm telling you. Wait, oh, oh, if, if, if I would have kept playing, I would have been in the NFL instead of uh, professional basketball. Just throwing that out there. Well, I'm going to come back to that, but I want to get question number five, but we're going to come back to that. Because number five is the question everybody wants to know. Is an animal cracker a cookie or a cracker? It's an animal cookie. It's a cracker. It's an animal oh, it's cookie. It's a cookie. Nobody, nobody cares what I It's a cookie. It's a, it's a cookie, right. 100%. That's a terrible cookie, then. You eat it with soup? No. It's a snack, so it's a cookie. No, it's not. I eat crackers for a snack. What's your yeah, point? Right. It's a sweet snack. I am with you. I think it's a, I think it's a cookie. While JP runs off, I wanted to get back. So tell us about your – did you, you didn't play college football, just high school? No. I actually – I eat these for snacks. Look, <laughs> we'll put cheese on them. And what did it say on there? That's not a cookie. That's not an animal cookie. I know That's it's a cracker. A What's your point? You eat cookies and crackers for snacks. All right, man. Levi, you were saying about your high school football career? Yes, I only I only played until ninth grade. But my high school principal, they were they wanted me to play varsity football. When I, after my eighth grade season, they wanted me to – so middle school ended early. They wanted me to move to the high school team right after our last game and finish the season with the varsity. And we have one of the biggest high schools in the state. That's what my so that just That just shows you – that just shows you yeah. that was pretty good. We used to, Our middle school – our games used to sell out like crazy. And I come from a football family. I'm the only basketball player in the family. So I kind of think maybe I was supposed to play football. But I went, you know – the way my brothers, both of my brothers play college football. So. I like it. Maybe my high school, were going to say something? My high school principal says, my high school principal to this day says that I'm the best quarterback that never stepped foot onto the high school field. That gets you nowhere. It doesn't. It doesn't. But I'm just saying, if I were to play. The cross country, I like it. The cross country coach wanted me to play varsity too, and I said no. You could have been in the Olympics. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> AP, did you play football in high school? No, I didn't. Honest to God, I played quarterback when I was younger, and I couldn't remember the plays, so I stopped. <laughs> so, Well, guys, this has been a lot of fun. I can't thank you enough for taking some time. Hope the questions weren't too tough, but it's great to see you. All the best. Stay healthy. We look forward to seeing you back on the basketball court real soon. Thanks. Yes, Same to you. you. I appreciate you. Charge up. Charge up, guys. And again, we want to thank all of our Charge Nation members, corporate partners, and all of our Charge fans for joining us here today on today's Sugardale Charge Chat. Until next time, stay safe, stay home, and we want to see you again real soon at the next Charge game. Take care.